on tonight because this one was heavy on my soul i'm tired of the fake alpha males online boosting up these brokies heads and making them all think that they high value sir nothing about you is high value your bank account's not high value your morals and standards ain't high value even your car ain't high value it's underwater and depreciated but for some reason they got y'all hyped up making you think that you're in the top one percent just because you got promoted to the team lead at the amazon warehouse it's 2021. Most of us women nowadays, we making more money than a lot of y'all dudes. We the niggas with the money. So for you to be thinking that you have value out here and that your poor character morals, you can make up with it with your bank account. Some women can be bought, but guess what, baby? Not all of us can be bought. Hello, 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 guys. It is Lexis Exodus, leader of the Black Woman Exodus. How are y'all doing? <laughs> Hello, guys. Like always, if you enjoy this content, please like and subscribe. Please share. And also, if you have any tips or any suggestions for content, please feel free to email me or shoot a quick note at LexisExodusChannel at gmail.com. <laughs> I hope you guys are doing well. I am doing awesome. It's almost Friday, y'all. <laughs> um, this is another installment of my daily series called The Blackest Stand Zoo, where we profile the animals, monsters, derelicts, and other creatures often found in Blackistan. So, by the way, so this series premieres, you guys know, daily, Monday through Friday at 6.30 p.m. ET. Um, y'all, I just got to let y'all know, I'm so happy about the engagement. <laughs> I am so happy about the response. I get so many comments from you guys, so many emails from you guys appreciating the content. Um, you guys are lit in the chat. Shout out to my exes, shout out to my moderators who hold it down, um, every night at 630. So I plan to continue doing this series daily, Monday through Friday in April. Um, and so, yeah, continue to let me know if you enjoy this series because um, I'll keep doing it as long as you guys continue to give me that feedback and that engagement and you guys are um, are actively, you know, indicating that, that you guys appreciate uh, the series. I know y'all can't share <laughs> because some of this shit can be very, very radical, very controversial, my thoughts. Um, and I don't want y'all to get canceled. I know uh, divested women, we got careers, we got um, professions, we got educations and shit. So I know, you know, everyone can't share, but just um, give me a like or say hello, chime in and just let me know that you're listening. <laughs> Um, and while we are on the topic of that, so y'all know I told y'all I am a very, very big fan of Divested Zealot. Um, you guys uh, put me on to her after I made a video about a few of the content creators within the divestment community that I enjoy. Um, well, I recently joined her Patreon this week and I was listening to some content and then I heard her mention my name. <laughs> and so in her latest video, her and her followers are showing me lots of love on Patreon. So uh, I don't, I mean, I don't know if she'll hear this, but y'all don't understand how much I appreciate that, especially because I'm, I'm a newer divestment channel. Um, and I know that there can be a lot of infighting and a lot of bickering within the divestment community. So it was really, really nice to hear, you know, an OG <laughs> uh, Black woman divester um, content creator show love. And it was great to hear uh, the support and to have to experience that um, uh, supporting one another. You know, we 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 don't all got to do that. We don't all got to fight over uh, likes and subscribes. You know, it's like it's enough for everybody. Just because I watch one content creator doesn't mean that I have to stop watching another. It's, it's enough. There's room for everybody to, to, uh, 
occupy spaces and to, um, you know, create their own content. We all have our own niches. We all have our own spin and our own perspectives and views. So that was really nice. You know, we are two divested women are already too alienated and isolated because of our ideas. You know, we, we fight, we, we be fighting with mammies. We'd be fighting with dusties and Beckys. Uh, we don't need to fight with one another within the community. So Shout out to her. Thanks so much, guys, for putting me on to her. She's excellent. She's amazing. I do plan on doing a tribute uh, to her because I really, really enjoy her content. Um, and I want to give her her flowers uh, while she's here. And I, I, I just think she's so dope. So, okay, <laughs> enough of that. So today we're going to uh, get into the Pakistan Zoo installment, the latest installment. Um, and today we're going to highlight the dirty dick dog of Blackistan. <laughs> so their habitat, these dirty dick dogs exist all throughout Blackistan, all throughout Nicaragua. They, I mean, it's global. And again, let's just hone in and um, really illustrate the fact and emphasize the fact that this is global. This is not um, just isolated to black males that are Americans. This is isolated, um, not isolated. This is found commonly throughout the world. So they're found everywhere. Their appearances. So these nakers run the gamut. Um, these dirty dick foos can be small, tall. They can be skinny, short, fat. They can be ugly. Oftentimes they are ugly, but they can also be attractive. They can be broke and rich, which is interesting because you think that uh, broke niggas wouldn't have time to cheat, but they do. Um, they start feeling themselves when they get a pretty girl on a arm and try to, you know, push boundaries to see how many other women they can attract. Um, so they have a pretty indistinguishable appearance. Um, you know, niggas at McDonald's will, will be dirty dick dogs. So they, they run the gamut. Um, so their behavior, they're identifiable by being horn dogs. So these dogs will fuck anything with legs. Uh, sometimes, you know, they'll fuck things without legs because I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if they're fucking paraplegics. They can't keep their D in their pants. And it's interesting because they have all of this energy to chase women and to uh, chase sex and to, uh, you know, be on um, this pursuit of pussy, but don't have any time or energy to work on cultivating resources and cultivating assets and building up their communities. They just want to lay up and fuck um, and chase anything, anything with two legs. So these these dirty dick dogs, their natural counterparts are mammies. Um, they're also Beckys. You'll see them with my lings, Maria, sometimes even crackheads, uh, children. They they don't discriminate. Um, animals, you know, we saw um, Miss Archduchess do a profile or do a video um, exposing how a lot of these fools will fuck animals. So they are just disgusting. Um, so these dogs behavior, so they're characterized by um, just being very promiscuous, being nasty, having multiple children. A lot of times they'll have secret children. So multiple baby moms, sometimes they'll have children across town that their wives and girlfriends don't know about. So they'll have secret families. And um, they're identifiable by um, them just being diseased and dusty. And they'll slang their little D everywhere freely and will bring all sorts of SDIs and SDDs to their wives and girlfriends back home. Um, and one um, notable note that I, I'd like to highlight, I, I'll never forget uh, when I was back in Pakistan, my, my, my dirty nicker, dirty dog uh, nicker, um, I remember finding out that he messed with some ugly, sloppy, nasty, disgusting looking chick. She looked like she, she smelled. And I remember him saying, well, pussy don't got no face. And that, I mean, that sums it up. If, if you had to sum up the character of a dirty dick dog in one line, that that is accurate because that's how they feel. They will fuck anything they come across, anything in a skirt. 
So um, that's the profile of these dirty dogs. Let's actually look um, and review uh, these animals, these creatures in their natural habitats. So let's see, what, what do we have here? Okay, so this first video is um, of a woman uh, who caught her man cheating in her old house. <laughs> so let's watch this and then we'll unpack. You in my crib on the floor with a bitch. Oh, like under my cover. This ain't never. This <laughs> part two of this video this dusty ass dirty dick dog he had the audacity to take another woman to his ex's house her old apartment her old home after she kicked him out with with artwork in the background that says family first <laughs> you can't make this shit up let's keep watching the second uh part of this video um look at this book this is some embarrassing ass shit this is sad. <laughs> Look at this crib. I wouldn't even lay it in this bitch if I was like, hell no. Mm -mm. You want me to come lay on the floor and I got a whole crib? Listen. You got to be kidding me. Nick, you see this shit? You do you see this shit? I hope a nigga don't think he's getting this coat. <laughs> Can't get shit from me, sis. Hurry up and get up out of my shit. Hurry up and get out. Trayshawn, I suggest you don't say shit for you get your ass beat. That's your best bet, sis. That's your best bet, you fucking booty faggot. This is fucking hilarious. <laughs> so no, beat they ass. I, I don't even have the energy. The, the fact that I just really don't give a fuck about Trayshawn and I done put him out so many times. It's pointless for me to even fight the nigga. For what? Bitch, you better shut the fuck up. Because I, I really don't think you want that energy. I really, I, I think you don't want that energy. I, that's your best bet. It, I suggest you, I don't give a fuck. Bitch, you in my motherfucking shit. Lay up with a bitch. So I suggest you shut the fuck up. That's your best bet while I'm being nice. Because uh -oh. you know what type of ignorant I am. Find somebody else to play with, Trayshawn, for real. While I'm letting you walk out of here home, you better be happy. Fuck. You ain't getting shit. Get your ass the fuck up out of my shit. 
Oh boy. They're tough. Pussy ass need that coat. Just just know. Just know that's all you gonna be getting. Fucking bust ass bitch. Fuck out Oh, my Lord. <laughs> Look at this shit, y'all. This is funny. No. This is the fucking funniest shit I ever seen. Champagne fucking Urbana. This nigga <laughs> laid up in... Okay, so this is actually not funny. This is pretty sad. <laughs> I'm glad sis can laugh at it. Um, she's able to take it in stride. You can tell how nonchalant she is. She's accustomed to this bullshit. Um, she's not taking it back or surprised or upset about it. This is a normal circumstance that um, happens uh, within their relationship. This is a normal circumstance that happens throughout Black the Stand when you mess with these dogs. So my thing is, though, y'all, like this dumbass girl fucking him on the floor, y'all. On the floor. I don't, was that even an air mattress or was it just a mattress on the floor? Was it just blankets? I don't know. But it's like really have some standards, y'all. And she walking off with them. She walking off with them. And the, here's the crazy thing is he's taking this girl to his chick's house because he doesn't have one. And what always boggled my mind in Black Estate and Nicaragua is the fact that um, you think that these men would be super heavily focused on trying to become financially stable because they have nothing. But no, 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 no. They 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 focused on slinging a peen, a dirty peen to anyone who will take it. And they're focused on dating and, you know, they, they focus on the wrong things. And, you know, this might be an unpopular opinion, but I've, I've felt like this for years, that if you don't have a home, if you don't have a career, if you're financially unstable, um, if shit is not in order, then you cannot afford to date or cupcake. And what I mean by that is you can't afford it financially, so you can't afford to be taking a woman out on dates. You can't afford to be going out to eat. You can't afford to spend money on anything else other than improving yourself and um, other than focusing on leveling up. Um in addition to that, you ain't got the time to be able to, to, to spend time with, with women and on dating and on um, courting someone when you broke. That's, that's reserved for motherfuckers, for niggas with resources. Dating, having a good time, having sex, that's reserved for men who are men. Men who can take care of themselves, men who can take care of the women that they're courting, men who can take care of the women that they're laying down with. Any additional time or resources that you have needs to be solely dedicated to you getting your shit together. But nah, that's that's um that's just so foreign in Blackistan. That is just the, they don't understand and they don't grasp uh basic concepts of hey, well, probably if I can't afford to take care of myself, I probably shouldn't be hanging out with this girl right now because whatever time I have, I need to be, you know, online sprucing up my resume. <laughs> I need to be polishing up my interviewing skills. I need to be applying for jobs. <laughs> nah, they just want to lay up and sling dick everywhere. So here's another video. And this, actually, I found these next few videos on World uh, Star Hip Hop. And um, I hate World Star. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. Because it's full of um, Pakistani maggots. Um, it is a site that's toxic. Um, like I saw, I remember going on here and seeing that video of that boy hitting that woman with a skateboard in the face of World Star. Um, I've seen a lot of those anti-Asian attacks with these niggers attacking innocent Asian elderly people on World Star. So I don't enjoy it, but I do think it's useful um, when it comes to finding examples and um, finding instances that illustrate how important it is for Black women to divest. So here, here's one. So this is a clip of a man who got caught cheating by his pregnant girlfriend and ends up beating her up. Lol, y'all. Oh boy. He got on her pants. Is he cheating? Is he cheating? And he wants to put his hands on his pregnant no. ass girlfriend with her kids out here. Bitch, the kids are rock your shit. Run up on me again. Run up on me. No, no. Bitch. Yeah. 
Keep it got fucked up trying to hit a woman. Uh oh, she. Oh my God, she's fighting that man. fighting another person to get to this woman who is a few feet uh, smaller than him who's not as strong as him who is defenseless he's such a pussy I wouldn't be standing in the middle of no damn body I'd be calling the fucking police Derek Chauvin, please come and handle this naked shit. What's the other motherfucker, George Zimmerman? Please come and handle this motherfucker. This ape. He, now he's beating up his pregnant girlfriend. That don't make no fucking sense. He's saying he don't care about none of that. I'm so angry. So that's enough. Uh, I don't know. This goes on for another 60 seconds, but I think we've seen enough. So, y'all, this this nigger done got caught cheating and now he mad. And my thing is, dude, like, what the fuck is going on? Like, and this is what I mean about black women not being protected in black ascent. Who is this videoing? Use your phone to call the police. Who, like, where are the front office staff within this hotel? How come they didn't call the authorities? This don't make no fucking sense. Somebody should have called the police, the popo, so they could uh, practice, uh, target practice on this nigger. Because that don't make no fucking sense. He's beating up his pregnant wife, his pregnant girlfriend, because he got caught cheating. And I done been there, done that, y'all. And um, I remember with my ex back in Blackistan um, telling him that I'm done, I'm done, I'm done, because I had caught him cheating as well and tell him that I was leaving. And he got mad and his response was to choke me. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's, it's so bizarre because it's like, damn, like no remorse, no being apologetic. Your response as a result of you fucking up is to get angry at me. And you know the reason why is because they're thinking, th these dogs are thinking, damn, you know, now I'm not going to be able to, to live in her house rent free. Now I'm going to have to work. Now I'm not going to be able to, to use your food stamp card to benefit off of uh, the assistance that you get from the government. Now I'm not going to be able to use, use this woman's car to fuck other bitches. And there's, there's no empathy, there's no remorse, there's no, um, I'm sorry for hurting you and possibly exposing you and our unborn child to STDs and STIs. No, it's, it's I'm mad, bitch, because you caught me, your dumb ass caught me. And y'all, as we um, continue with this series, I'll, um, I'll share personal stories <laughs> here and there. 
And it's because I, you know, I I have stories for days from my experience in Black Ascent. And I'm I'm not, you know, an older woman. I'm, you know, I'm I'm not a spring chicken. I'm I'm 32, but um I have stories for days about, you know, horror stories and different really traumatic experience that I experienced in Black Estan. So I'll share share those as we proceed with this series. Uh but I divest it early, which is a crazy thing, but I still have a slew. I could write a book on my life and what I've I've been through. So um one one thing that this this clip made me remember is um when I was back in school working on my bachelor's degree, my first degree in journalism. So I took a class where they taught you investigative journalism skills. So they taught you literally how to research different public record databases. Um, You could research like property taxes. Um, You could research deeds. You could research um, court records. So arrest records, police reports, um, marriage records, different things like that. Like all of this is public record. And I don't think Nickers understand that. Um, But yeah, so I I, uh, had this class where they taught us how to conduct that type of investigative research. And so I thought for shits shits and giggles that I would um, research the men that I were dating at the time. Um, I was single. I was in my early 20s and I was having fun. So I thought, all right, let me just do a a quick search of uh, background search of these fools. So one of the dudes that I was talking to was married child. I found that out by conducting my investigative research. And it wasn't funny at the time. Now I can laugh at it, but it really wasn't funny back then because I felt like shit um, that that happened. Although he lied to me and didn't tell me any of that. And I didn't find out till after the fact. But so I confronted this fool and I told him like, dude, you wasn't going to tell me you was married. Um, And he told me verbatim, I didn't think you would go snooping. It wasn't my fault that you went researching shit that you didn't have no business searching. And y'all, I about damn near jumped through that phone and strangled him because it's like, damn, like these fools don't have no shame. And it, it was crazy because this nigga didn't have a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out of. And I was very, very young and naive. Uh, he was an older man. He was about 10 years older than me. I was very, very book smart but very, very green and very naive when it came to like relationships and dating. So I was like on the up and up on my shit at the age of 18, 19. I was in college on a scholarship, an academic scholarship. I had my own apartment. I had a job. I had my own car and all this wonderful things, um, all these wonderful things going for myself. And this fool was 10 years older than me. He had no job. He had two kids. He lived with his mom because it turns out his wife kicked him out and was done with him because he was a cheating ass dude. Um, And he was dealing with me and was still legally married and did not tell me anything about that. I also remember in Blackistan, um, way after I left that situation, getting approached by an older male at the bar while with my cousins. And I remember our first phone conversation because I gave him my number. This was before I was divested. And I remember him saying, um, yeah, you know, I was out at the club just trying to take my mind off things because my wife had a miscarriage and we're on, um, things are tough right now. We're on tough terms. And I remember just thinking like, what the fuck? And so I told him like, you know what? I'm not, I'm not interested. I was probably like 23 at the time and he had to be in his forties. And I'm I'm like, I'm not interested. You're married, dude. And his response, which really boggled my mind and was flabbergasting was that he said, I could have lied to you and I didn't have to tell you the truth, but I'm trying to be a man and be honest with you. (laughs) Moment of silence. Like th- this is this is that problematic, erroneous nigger logic. Like he thought that he deserved a gold star or a high five just for being honest. So it wasn't like, oh, I probably shouldn't be talking to you, period, until I get legally divorced. It was, well, shoot, at least I'm honest. And and this is what I mean about the bar being in hell, like I said, because they want credit for stupid ass fuck shit. How about you don't fuck? When you're legally married, how about you don't fuck other people and date other women 
or court other women when you're married to someone and you have a whole damn wife out. Um, how about you be disciplined and keep, keep your D in your pants until you're legally divorced? But this is the type of mentality that's so common in, within this community. Okay, let's look at our next few clips. So what is this? This is a chick who caught her man cheating and beat him with a belt around the room. Let's see. I don't know if he, is he cheating with the Becky? No, make no damn sense. Oh boy, he had a girl on his phone trying to come to the hotel, and she seen it while he was asleep. They're in LA visiting from Atlanta. Oh, Jesus. All right, let's look at this next one and then we'll, we'll talk through what's happening here and we'll unpack. This is a girl pouring water on her man for cheating on her. Hot water, golden water. Okay, y'all. Oh, so I got a headache, y'all. This is sad. This is pathetic. So, Black women, you don't have to do all of that. You don't. You don't. Like, oh, I wish I could encourage. I don't know what else to do to illustrate and to prompt you and to encourage you to divest and to escape Blackistan. And I say that being someone who personally experienced the atrocities of things within this community um, and escaping years ago. So the reason why I say divest is because I, when I was 26, I made the decision after being burnt so many times and after being treated so poorly so many times over and over again, I finally decided that it made sense for me to value character over color, to prioritize how that person treated me as opposed to what that person looked like. And I'll tell you my experience on the opposite end of the spectrum. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy. Oh, I could cry. So my husband is a quote unquote high value Brad. He makes um, the higher end of six figures. Brad's value, marriage, they respect the family unit. Um, and let me tell y'all, I want to read to y'all what my husband texted me randomly today. Cause it was so out of the blue. It's like, why are you texting me this stuff? Because we are happily married and he is just an amazing husband. Um, so yeah, so this is what he said, ran him out of nowhere after, I mean, we, we have been really, really enjoying one another and enjoying our relationship. So he, he texted me randomly, random question. And I don't want you to ask me it back. Cause I'm asking for myself. Is there anything you would like me to work on to be a better husband to you? It can literally be anything. <laughs> so I responded like, um, eh, I can't think of anything. I guess I could sleep on it. Um, and then he says, I really want you to feel that as your husband, you know, I make a constant effort to make you feel loved, appreciated, cared for special, beautiful, respected, and desired. And I'm getting emotional just even going through those text messages because y'all been through the ringer. So to have someone like that who really is just, um, has true integrity, who really is, um, has values and is just a good man and appreciates and respects women. That's still, it's still new to me. We've, we've been married for six years and still it's new to me. So 
but this is what you will experience when you divest, y'all. I'm telling you, my man is amazing. And you know how people will like gush over uh, their man. And it's like, of course, everything is fairy tales and um, fairies and rainbows and butterflies and bubble gum. But it's because y'all only been together for, together for six months. I've been with my husband since 2016. And he has consistently proven and has stepped up to the plate and has been an incredible man and a wonderful person. Um, and a lot of channels will recommend that you date brides uh, for financial reasons. And for me, it's like, all right, well, I got that. So um, my brad moved me and my son to a gated community. He accepts my baby like his own, although he has no children. He put $10,000 down on my luxury vehicle. <laughs> he increased my credit score, 200 points is meeting him. He makes well over six figures, a higher end of six figures, um, because he has a lucrative business um, in the home renovation industry that he, he built from the ground up. We have a safe full of money, thousands of dollars. I probably shouldn't say that, but <laughs> y'all know who I am. <laughs> but we have so much money just piled up in our bank accounts and, and our safes um, and in our lock boxes at the bank. And he'll just... I'll tell him, hey, I, I want this. I, I want to go on vacation with my friends. He'll pull off $100, $100 bills, and we'll just be like, hey, what do you need? Like, it's nothing. Like, it's nothing. Here you go, babe. Whatever you need, I got you. But it's not only the financial benefits that you get from divesting. You also get someone who can genuinely love and respect you. So I, I don't have to worry about girls calling my phone randomly or people DMing me or people texting me saying they want to talk to me woman to woman. I don't ever have to worry about whether or not he's going to come home at night. He comes home at five o'clock. It's like clockwork <laughs> every night. Our, it's so funny because our life is just like leave it to beaver because I'm in the kitchen cooking at five because I can time when he'll be home and when he'll arrive and he'll get off, come from his office and he'll walk in the door and give me the sweetest most romantic kiss and um, embrace and he's just amazing y'all. Um, and even when we're angry though, like we respectfully communicate, he's not like, yelling at me. He's not calling me out my name. He's not calling me bitches and shit. And if we get to a point where there's really a point of contention, we'll both establish distance and respectfully will um, honor that space that we need to establish between one another uh, so we can calm down. I don't have to worry about catching crabs and chlamydia and all that other, a slew of other diseases that run rampant in Blackistan. Um, and so I say all that to say, like, Black women, y'all don't got to do this. Y'all don't have to go through this. Y'all don't have to go through this. It's like you going, experiencing these relationships and you're enduring these relationships and you're getting mistreated and you're not benefiting at all. So these motherfuckers are broke. Uh, they cheat. Um, they have no type of assets or resources. So you're having to mule. You're having to work double shifts. You're having to work overnight shifts to take care of the family. I mean, he's not even faithful. So it's like, what are you getting out of the deal? Um, all you're doing is giving up your body, giving up your your prime your 20s, giving up your youthful, most important years to people who don't deserve it. And all you're getting in return is STDs, side babies, and heartache. And the other thing too is he, like the one girl threw a pot of boiling water on her man. The other one whooped him with the belt while he was naked and it's like, y'all, then y'all further fucking up your life because that's aggravated assault. That's a felony. So now you fucking up your shit. So you, once you do finally decide to leave this nigger, you can't even go on and move on about your business because guess what? If you have a nursing degree or if you have um, certain credentials professionally, that don't matter because now you, you're you an ex-felon and you done been to prison and got this uh, huge red mark on your record. So I'll sum that up to say, really, really, y'all, make better choices. Make better choices. It, this is life or death. 
Um, and the most important decision that you can make is who you decide to spend the rest of your life with. So choose wisely. Until next time, see you guys.